Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, I know I promised in the at the end of the last video that we'd start getting our hands dirty with uh, code, and we we will. However, I wanted to take one little uh, or one more sidebar here and uh, make sure that everybody has the actual environment that uh, they need to to go further uh, or go past this point here. I know I talked about the concepts and everything in the last two videos, but uh, I want to run through really quick how to set things up so that you, you can uh, move forward here and work with us on these next projects without having problems. Um, I can't go through all the steps because I don't want to have to buy a hosting plan and I don't need to install another server on my, my computer. but. Uh, I will walk you through as much as I can here. So the first thing we're going to talk about is uh, getting a hosting account, which is probably the easier way to do things. Um, installing and, and running a server on your own, uh, it's it's not impossible, but paying the uh, couple bucks a month to have a, a company manage your server and hosting account for you is uh, definitely worth it, at least at the uh, basic stages here. But we're going to talk about both anyway. Uh, for hosting, I'm going to go ahead and plug the uh, company we use the most here with uh, Digital Craft as well as uh, the company I work for, Think Revision. Um, we've been using Hosticator for many, many years. Um, you can feel free to use whatever hosting company you want, of course. Um, I just know and trust uh, Hosticator here, so I know I can't steer you guys wrong with this. Um, just be careful. Uh, don't don't let f the the terms free or really cheap uh, get in your way of uh, quality. Uh, I don't want you to go out and find super cheap hostcompany.com or whatever and get a really crappy deal and sign up for a bunch of crap you don't need. Um, so I won't harp on that too much, but. At least check out HostGator.com, which we're going to do right now. So if you open up your browser and, as you guessed, just type in HostGator.com, um, they've got a handful of different options. Um, and as I have here on our PowerPoint, they offer general hosting. They offer the virtual private servers, which we discussed in the last video. They offer dedicated servers. We also discussed, uh, they also offer reseller servers, um, which I definitely don't recommend at this point, but, um, and I left out in the last video, but since we're going to be looking at the website, I wanted to bring it up anyways, because you're probably going to take a peek at it anyway and should know what it is. Um, reseller is kind of, uh, I, I think it would fall more in the lines of a virtual private server, only it's set up for people to kind of have their own hosting company, uh, kind of branched off of HostGator. Uh, we actually do that. We don't do it really to make any money. We just do it so that we can set up um, hosting packages for our clients who don't need a whole lot of space. In fact, uh, I've mentioned a couple times now that we're working on, uh, at least the digital craft here, we're working on setting up a a simple server to offer to you guys, the the viewers, uh, for free, to have just the just the basic resources, just enough to do these projects here, nothing over the top. Um, but in doing so, we would be using a reseller account and setting you guys up with uh, simple hosting packages. Um, in the meantime, though, uh, definitely if you're if you're planning on getting hosting. You know, go ahead and, and do what you need to do because I can't guarantee when we will have that up yet so don't don't uh, don't wait for that um, so let's go back to their website and I, I would definitely as I've said a couple times now uh, if you're going to go and pay for a, a hosting service um, at this point in the in the stage especially if you're still just trying things out and you're not doing anything, uh, any professional work, 
I would definitely recommend just a basic web hosting plan. Um, anything above that, you're gonna you're gonna be spending a hefty amount a month, uh, anywhere from thirty to four hundred dollars a month to to have the uh, bigger plans, and those are definitely not necessary at this stage in the game. Uh, so you can see here, it's pretty well inexpensive. Uh, it looks like you can start at about four dollars a month. Uh, looks like I think that's a yeah, it's a discounted price, so I think it goes up. Um, to I think somewhere around six or seven dollars a month after the first month or something um, don't quote me on that but either way it's still pretty cheap you get unlimited disk space unlimited bandwidth um, there are some catches to that but really you, you can't beat that there um, so at this point this is this is a good place to start here you can always bump up here and get SSL certificates which um, we don't really need at this point either. We're not even going to talk about it. I, I don't believe in this series. Um, the main benefit here is if you want to have more than one domain name pointed to this account, you would want to do this baby plan here. Um, otherwise you can have one single domain name, um, pointed here with the hatchling plan, um, business plan. You definitely don't need here at this time. I'm not trying to hurt uh, HostGator's sales or anything, but um, these are more for uh, once you're starting to do professional level work, in which case uh, we, you might want to start looking at the virtual private server hosting or dedicated servers. Um, so to set these up, uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, you basically say order now and you can either register a domain name now or if you already have a domain name enter it in here uh, and continue on um, you should be able to just follow the steps and get up uh, get set up right away um, they're going to ask you for your email address and what they're going to do once it's set up is they're going to shoot you an email with your login information to um, to get to the FTP and using FTP we can we can uh, plug in that data uh, in Dreamweaver and connect directly to our server from Dreamweaver or whatever program you're using so it's important to, to keep an eye out for that email and write down that information somewhere safe Now the other way of going about things is to set up your own server um, locally on your on your computer or a computer around on your network. Um, we're going to just run through the basics of setting it up on the computer you're using right now, which you're you know more than welcome to do. Uh, it's kind of a preference. Uh, I prefer to have my servers running on other computers. Uh, in my network, but you can definitely do it on your on your main computer here. And what we're going to use is a service called Apache Friends, um, or sorry, a service called Xamp, which is from Apache Friends at ApacheFriends.org. Uh, what they've done is set up a nice quick install package called Xamp, which installs and, and configures Apache, PHP, MySQL, Perl, and, and a bunch of other stuff. Um, so it kind of works right out of the box, which is, is great. And it even has a handy little control panel to turn on and off the, the servers and services. Um, because one thing, you know, I found out the, uh, the hard way when, when learning this stuff and teaching myself this stuff was that, uh, installing Apache by yourself when you're beginning beginner is, um, a little bit of a daunting task and really meant for, the uh, more advanced user who who knows exactly what they want to do and what what the configurations are that they want because it's important to know that Apache um, unlike other software you're used to installing on your computers uh, there isn't really an interface it's all um, it's all running in the background as a service or an app but it's still regardless running in the background and without a service like XAMPP 
you're really not going to see any virtual or uh, sorry any visual um, interface like a uh, like a GUI which uh, stands for graphical interface sorry graphical user interface um, and most of the changes you're going to have to do are command line changes um, and if you don't know what that is I don't know if anybody, uh, whoever is watching this who's old enough to remember DOS, um, that would be considered command line. Um, and if you are old enough to remember that, you remember that it wasn't, uh, wasn't as user-friendly as um, doing things here with Windows and GUIs. Anyway, um, so like I said, definitely go with the XAMPP or um, a package that will install Apache for you. Um, and wait to install Apache by yourself until you, know, you have a much better handle on things. So let's go there. Um, go to your browser and go to Apache. Go to ApacheFriends.org. Um, there's a lot going on their website here, so follow along with me. Uh, it looks like they have a new uh, beta version out for Linux, which um, I'm going to check that out probably here um, for myself. But if you go here and just go ahead and click on XAMPP and uh, you choose your package, um, I assume most of you guys are using Windows or Mac. Um, Linux is a good. Uh, operating system to use once you get a little more used to this if you want to have a Unix machine. Uh, it's more the preferred route for, for running Apache, but you can definitely do it with Windows or Mac if you want to. Um, we're going to look at the, the Windows version since we're using a Windows computer. Um, so you pretty much need to come here and download XAMPP. Uh, don't recommend downloading these add-ons or the USB version uh, just yet. Um, so just download it and I definitely recommend getting the installer. It saves the step of having to run a um, WinZip or WinRAR program. Um, the installer will, will do it for you. And like I said, I don't, I don't want to install another server on my computer. Um, but once you run it, it, it runs just like any other installation. Um, just you know, follow the steps, read read everything pretty clearly, and go from there. Everything should set up kind of on its own. And once you're done, you're gonna have a uh, a new folder added to your your programs here. or XAMPP and if you open up the control panel you'll see here this is the uh, interface I was talking about it's nothing fancy but it's definitely definitely helpful um, it shows you that Apache is running MySQL is running FileZilla which is a FTP um, client that's running too um, at the very least you're going to want to have Apache and MySQL running for these videos um, the the only thing to to note is that you need to know where your um, document root is. Um, it's I, I believe it's going to ask you that in the the installation um, where you want that to be. Uh, I almost recommend making it the default, or if you are going to change it to something else, make sure you remember where it's at. Um, and the importance of this this folder is this is where your web pages, websites, whatever uh, is going to run. Uh, remember I said that in order to, to view PHP you need to be running it on the server and if you want to view PHP they need to be in this folder. Now you can set up multiple folders within this route if you want to have several different projects. Um, that's fine, but as long as your PHP stuff um, and server server ended uh, uh, documents are all within um, that root folder which generally I think is going to be called HTDocs when installing this kind of out of the box. 
Um, it's usually located off the XAMPP folder. Um, so by default, I would I would think that if 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 you're looking for it, you can't find it. It's going to be on your C drive in the XAMPP folder, and from there the HT Docs folder. Um, and again, you can make that whatever you want during the installation. Um, just remember where you put it. So that's really all we need at this point to go ahead and start working with uh, PHP and, and making these dynamic sites we're going to work on. And I just wanted to make sure that everybody is on the same page here. Um, when doing it, uh, if you do go the hosting route, um, generally PHP and MySQL, that's all going to be installed for you already. Um, and really quick, let's go ahead and look at um, what you're gonna see when you when you log on to that uh, control or to your hosting um, account. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull up one of my domain names, and this is actually where um, that hosting service that uh, I'm talking about that we've been. I'm going to pull up one of our uh, one of our domain names, uh, which is actually where we we may host the um, hosting service that we're uh, we're going to try and provide down the line here. Um, so dev for web co. Um, and generally, uh, like if you're going to go with uh, Hostgator, they're going to set up. Um, what's called cPanel, which is a really nice product that helps you uh, manage your, your hosting space or your server. Um, this is definitely a luxury you're not going to have when you uh, set up a server uh, on your local machine. Um, licensing cPanel is, is pretty expensive on your own, so it's, it's pretty nice to the hosting companies to give you a copy of that for free. Um, nine times out of ten, it's going to to, to access it, it's going to be your domain name slash cPanel. Um, and what we've done is kind of set up a skeleton here for um, what we're going to offer people when we when we launch this. And it's kind of a stripped down version of what you're going to get, uh, say, if you go with HostGator. Um, but you're going to get options for mail, which we've we've stripped out. But you can you can set up email accounts and manage that. Um, you can manage your files by uh, loading their their uh, file manager interface. Uh, you can also do that via your FTP program. Uh, here you can set up your MySQL databases and use PHP My Admin to to manage them. Which uh, this is a very nice um, free product that's uh, out there and generally this is included on XAMPP as well so you can have that on your local machine. This is kind of the gist of it. Like I said, if you if you get a hosting service through HostGator you're gonna have uh, many more options. This is our stripped down version that we're gonna be offering for free later on down the road. Um, but this just gives you an idea of what you're gonna see when you when you log into that hosting account. Um, so from this point on, we're going to assume that you've either set up a hosting account or you've set up a server on your on your local machine. Um, and uh, if I haven't stressed it enough, uh, if you have the you know four or five bucks a month to spend on hosting, I would definitely recommend going that route before trying to install a server on your computer. I'd wait for a while until you have a little more experience. Um, I don't mind answering web design and web development questions for people, but I, I'm not necessarily going to provide any support for setting up your own server. Um, there's too much liability there with uh, messing with your computer and things like that. So if you're going to do it that way, I, you know, do it at your own risk and make sure you just you know, follow the instructions when you're installing it and such. Um, so. In the uh, next video, we will start working in PHP, I promise, um, and I'll keep it this time.